Good morning, everyone. Sure looks like that winter doesn't want to give up on us, does it? But we're going to begin our service with victory in Jesus, and let's be standing, please. I heard an old old story how Satan came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, Seeking the lost.
Good morning. morning. On behalf of the elders, I'd like to welcome you to the church that meets here at Mountain View. Uh, I have a couple announcements this morning. Um, One prayer request. Uh, Ken Fawzen's mother uh, was put into the hospital um, for kidney stones and pneumonia. Uh, they, Ken and Beth are flying to Minnesota from Alaska to be with her. So uh, if you saw that in your bulletin, please keep that in your, them in your prayers. Um, we need AV help. So it, it requires no experience. I can run it. Um, if I can run it, you can run it. Ethan runs it. Uh, we have a couple of people, young, young men who do it. Um, So we just need help. We need help really bad. So if you'd like to do it, you even thought about doing it, please come see John or myself. We can get you hooked up. Um, Wednesday night will now start being at the building. There will be no Zoom and no YouTube. Um, It's going to start with a meal at 530, done by 730 at the latest, Gordon. Uh, Please come uh, for food for the body and the soul. Um, That's all the announcements I have. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, be with us as we go throughout this day. Lord, help us to worship you in a manner that's pleasing to you. Lord, please be with uh, Ken Fawzen and his mother and their family. Uh, Help her to to get better. Uh, Be with Ken and Beth as they're flying. Help them be safe. Lord, be with us as we go throughout this week and help us to ever be mindful of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children's worship. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, 
Kevin. Uh, Mike, is that going to start June the 1st, the first Wednesday in June? June the Food for the body and soul. Y'all come, you hear? Okay, that's the best I can do with Texas. <laughs> well, good morning, church family and friends. So good to see you here personally, and uh, for those who are able to connect with us via Zoom and on uh, YouTube this morning, uh, we welcome you to uh, Mountain View. That was a wonderful snow in some respects. It was wonderful for those who are having to get their chainsaws out and do a wee bit of trimming or a whole lot of trimming. Uh, uh, I think it was one of Marge uh, said, this snow came three years ago to the day, if, if you remember that. A lot of lovely trees could not bear the weight of the snow. So uh, I've been thinking about, uh, I've resurrected an old sermon from the dead. And I've redone it for you. Hopefully with some new uh, thoughts and insights. Um, there's only one word I could come up with to say to you. One single word. And maybe we could have the invitation, Kevin, right after that. <laughs> Is ba. Yeah, bah, not humbug. I want to talk about revisiting Psalm 23 and thinking of the Psalms and our brother Royce, who has one of the nicest, calmest voices that you can listen to on our own website www.mvcoc.org, you can hear the Psalms being read by our own brother Royce Kessler. He's done other work too, and uh, I hope you don't mind me embarrassing you for a little bit, but you do lovely work. And if you come across a Psalm that talks to you, especially the ones he's listed, they're all good to me, but um, they will restore you. They will lift you up. They will comfort you. And you can hear those by one of our own church members here at Mountain View. You know, uh, in John chapter 21, Jesus tells Peter three things. He, he wanted to know, did, did he love him? But every time he asked that same question, uh, Jesus would say, uh, feed my lambs. Tend the sheep. Feed my sheep. So, I can get this to work here. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, the, the, the 23rd Psalm is generally read at a funeral. I don't see it that way as being the perfect fit for a funeral. Yes, we, I've read it many a, many a time at a funeral. There's nothing wrong with it. But what about for the living? I want you to think of yourselves this morning. Instead of looking at your clothes, now you see wool. We are sheep. Psalm 100, verse 3, Know the Lord, that he is God. It is he who made us. 
And we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen? Amen. Hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, I need to go back to that one. There we go. I have a little deadness in my thumb today. That talks about our relationship to the Lord. Have you ever seen a happier sheep? Huh? This is what Jesus said in John 10 and verse 14. I'm the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Shepherds have such wonderful skills. They know every single lamb and every single ram and sheep in their flock. You know, have you ever wondered why the Holy Spirit chose to call actually elders shepherds? And how the church is referred to as the flock? We're not talking about geese here. We're talking about sheep. You know, the funny thing about sheep is sometimes they have a very poor sense of direction. They need a shepherd. They need a good shepherd. They don't need a hireling. They need a real shepherd who... You know, uh, Lynn Anderson, uh, if you've ever read any of his books or articles, uh, Brother Lynn Anderson passed away in, uh, just recently of uh, lung cancer. And he wrote a book called About the Eldership, How They Smell Like Sheep. It is because they know their own and their own know them. So, it speaks of a relationship. It's not just something that, uh, this is for life. That shepherd relationship between ourselves and the Lord, there should be no daylight between us. Now, oh, I shall not be in want. Right now, we're, we're having uh, trouble with uh, formula. Lots of places, babies need their formula, and there isn't enough to go around right now especially if you're on a particular kind of formula. We've also had, and maybe still have, delivery problems of all other items that we go to the shelves at our favorite grocery store, big chain or small. Well, I'm sorry we're out of that. I don't know where we're going on this. Supply. I know there's lots of demand. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with the demand side. It's the su supply side that we've got going here. But David is, he is in sheep mode. So when you read this psalm, you better be in sheep mode. Because we are his sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture. I shall not be in want. What does that mean? Well, let's think for a minute like sheep. That there will be an abundant and an endless supply of blessings for the sheep. Plenty of green grass. And quiet water. You know, sheep don't like running fast, running water. They don't like noisy stuff. They like it peace and quiet. 
Jesus talked about the abundant life, and you shall have it abundantly. You won't lack for anything. You know, it's not like tomorrow morning you go to your bank account and all of a sudden there's an overabundance of money in your checking account. It, it doesn't work like that. I'm not talking about things like that. And he makes me to lie down in green pastures. What does that bring to your mind, green pastures? On a lovely summer's day, have you ever just laid down on the grass and let all your cares float away? As you look up into that blue sky with clouds, and it's quiet and it's nice, We need to have more moments like that, huh? We need them. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He knows how important rest is for the weariness that sometimes we encounter in our souls. Hmm? Yeah. My favorite psalm, besides Psalm 23, 46, verse, verse 10, is to be still and know that I am God. I'm here. I'm your shepherd. You're my wee lamb. You're my sheep. And he leads me by still waters. So he understands my need to be refreshed, not only in my body, but in my soul and spirit. You know something about sheep is when they get sick, they can't tend to themselves. Sometimes they are pushed to the side by the rest of the flock. That's not a good situation. So that's why you need a shepherd. And he puts that sick sheep up on his shoulders and he carries that sheep while he is walking ahead and the sheep follow behind. As I said before, sometimes sheep don't have a great sense of direction. If one sheep falls off a cliff, there is a tendency for many in the flock to follow because they don't have a shepherd shouting over this way. But you know, we need refreshment of body, soul, and spirit. We're going to try that again. It was a successful program, don't you remember, on Wednesday nights? We're hoping that it will build up our numbers and build up more of our children to come with their parents. Parents, I appeal to you, bring your kids on Wednesday night starting on June 1st. We will have food for your and their bodies, for all of our bodies, and food for our souls too. It's time. And he restores my soul. You know, there's something about refreshment in all three departments, body, soul, and spirit brings restoration. Only the chief shepherd can soothe and heal all my wounds, all your wounds, and all your hearts. And by the way, Jesus wasn't just looking at Jewish sheep. This is what he said. John 10 and verse 16. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. Samaritan sheep. Roman sheep. Sheep from every part of the, the then known world. 
And I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Oh, I love that. And so he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Our chief shepherd never puts a foot wrong. And that song where he leads me, I will follow. There's a difference between styles of shepherding. In some parts of the world, the shepherd drives the sheep, pushes the sheep, which is odd. But in the Middle East, the method was you spent time enough with the sheep to call the sheep by their names. You know, <laughs> I'm not sh sure, you know, when they were doing this, Royce, they were going, one, how are you, Fred? Boom, boom. You know, counting sheep. Uh, somehow, he was able to have this relationship, a rapport with his flock. And so the idea of where he leads me, I will follow. Look at the shepherd in that picture. He is just a little way ahead. And if he wasn't there, they'd get into trouble. Am I right? You know something, when a church loses elders, they're shepherds, and they have none, it can turn to chaos. Oh, God knew why elders and shepherds were needed. To feed the flock, to tend the flock, and to take care of the lambs, the young ones. And for his namesake, you know, by knowing the name of the shepherd, and, and God as a shepherd has lots of, lots of good names, by knowing who he is, I can understand, we can understand, all of us can understand his purpose and will for all of us. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And Jesus said of himself, I'm the door. He's also the shepherd. But I'm the door and ever, anyone enters through me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. I love that. And here's one we, we generally really go strong on at a funeral, which it is a very comforting verse, don't you think? Even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, He will never leave me. He'll never leave me in the dark. You know, you've seen shepherds pick up sheep that just aren't going to make it because they just can't go on. And they put they put that sheep up on their shoulders and they give it TLC. Even though we are going through some bad times, dark times, where we have 
known death, and seen death. Hard times, stressful times. He will never leave you out in the cold or in the dark. And so I will fear no evil. The devil doesn't frighten me anymore. I will fear no evil because I am protected. I am safe in his arms. And like the end of the book of Hebrews, what can man do to me? Because we have the great shepherd. For you are with me. In the book of Revelation, he is called faithful and true. He will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. I'm sure the, the disciples had played over and over again how they forsook the Lord, and yet he, he told them, some of you, all of you this night will forsake me. In fact, he says, all of you shall be offended because of me this night. This is Matthew 26, 31. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock. But he died on the cross to forgive them of that. Hmm? After the resurrection, it was a different story, wasn't it? Satan could not defeat the great shepherd. Your rod and your staff. And you know, that is that first back. Part there, Mike, is not a fishing reference. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord disciplines the one he loves. That's what Hebrews chapter 12 is all about. And so, I think the psalmist here, who is David, he is thinking like a sheep. We need to think like sheep sometimes. And when the Lord disciplines us, I know it is difficult, it's hard, but the Lord only disciplines those he loves, and we should draw comfort from that, that he wants us to be better and knows we can be better and serve better and love better. And you prepare a table. <laughs> I like this little picture here of the wolves. <laughs> you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And, and I know you're wondering, where's the table? That little plateau is his table. And what is there is some juicy green grass. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When my enemies are trying to take me down, my God lifts me up and sets me on a rock. And if you're a sheep, you'll find grass on it. You'll find sustenance. You'll find support. He gives me the hope that never disappoints. I'm almost done. You anoint my head with oil. A shepherd will anoint the cuts and the bruises on the feet of the sheep and the lambs. Because they, they go over some rough terrain, don't they? 
and sometimes they stumble and fall. And one of the chief things in a shepherd's bag is a little bit of oil and a little bit of salt too. What did the Good Samaritan do? He poured oil and a little bit of wine into the wounds of the man who was beaten up. And like he was that guy's shepherd, he carried him. Well, he actually put him on his own beast of burden and took him to Motel 6. No, he took him to an inn. And those inns were few and far between, but the innkeeper knew the Samaritan and was good for, I'll be back in a few days, and if there's anything else that needs to be paid, I'll take care of the bill. Wow. He has sanctified me in the ministry and work of the Holy Spirit. Anointing. You only have to read 1 John chapter 2 to get a sense of that. And my cup overflows. For me, there is a bountiful supply of his grace and his mercy. Shepherd always has something for the sheep. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Are you still with me, sheep? All right. I was going to ask you to say, Bob, but I don't want to embarrass you. God's promise to pour out his abundant blessings upon me. We shall always be blessed. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now this is where I've diverged a wee bit. I'm thinking about the sheep wouldn't be allowed in the temple except as a sacrifice, right? So where could there be a place of safety? The house of the Lord, yes, is a place of safety. Now that security to abide in the sheepfold of God and you know what the sheepfold of God is called today? His church. Bah. And I shall dwell there forever. In other words, that's eternity. Finally, all of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Isaiah 53 and 6. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd, he said. The good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Like us. Like sinners that we need to talk to about the good shepherd. I hope you've heard God's word today, Romans 10 and 17. I hope something is changing in you because of hearing God's word, because of out of that comes faith and belief, belief that Jesus is truly God's only son, John 8 and 24, and that you might be ready and willing to say, I'm done with sin. I want to repent of my sin. Luke 13 and 3. And that you would confess Jesus before others because in Matthew 10, 32 to 33, I'll do the same for you before my Father in heaven. And then to be baptized for the forgiveness of all your sins, Acts 22 and 16. And Galatians 2 and 20 to be committed to the Lord. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that lives anymore, but Christ Jesus who lives in me. I think we're ready for the invitation song, Mike. And so all I have to say to you this morning is, bah.
There's a fountain free just for you and me. Let us sing so days to spring. There's a fountain of from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come? Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Before the Lord's Supper this morning, we're going to sing, Oft We Come Together. <clears throat>
the men of the congregation that, that lead our communion service share their thoughts and add scripture and guide our thoughts in, in what goes on during this memorial feast. I came across something that uh, I want to share this morning to help us guide our thoughts during communion this morning. And I want to give credit to Brother Jeff May from the Oakland Church of Christ, who wrote this entitled, Things to Think Upon During the Lord's Supper. He begins first, think about your covenant or your agreement with God. Remember that when you became a Christian, you promised God you would honor him by living as a Christian should. And he agreed to be your God. You agreed to be his child. During the Lord's Supper, you can reflect upon your covenant with God. Jesus made this clear in Matthew 26, verse 28, when he said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord's Supper also becomes a great time to examine our lives. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 27 through 31 says, So then, whoever eats of the bread or drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. So am I keeping up my end of the agreement? The supper can be a moment of great resolve to be all that we can be for the Lord. Next, we can think about the body of the Lord. No one impacted the world more than Jesus. All that he did, he did with his body. How does he impact the world today? It's still through his body, the church. We are his hands and his feet, his eyes, ears, and mouth today. As you partake of the bread today, which represents his body, you might think about your role in his body. Do you realize that God has given you certain abilities he wants you to use in his body? Just read 1 Peter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So are you doing your part in the body of Christ? Are you helping Christ impact the world today? That's a good thought during the Lord's Supper. And then think about Jesus as the bread of life. The bread you partake of is symbolic of his body, which died to give you life. Jesus is the bread of life, John 6, 35. As you share in that bread today, are you sharing him with others? Are there others you could share him with? Think about those who are yet thirsty and hungry for an answer to their soul's deepest longing. Share the Lord. We can think about the blood of the Lord. As you partake of the fruit of the vine, it might be a good time to ask the Lord to help you to never do anything that would show a lack of appreciation for his spilled blood. You might ask him to help you to show how much his blood really means to you. Think about the cup he had to drink. Matthew 26, verse 42. It was a dreadful cup. It contained mocking, scourging, spitting, nails, and abandonment. Pretty horrible. 
The cup you drink during the supper should remind you that he spared you from all of these things which you deserved. Now, won't that keep our thoughts focused for a while? Think about the communion you share with Christ and the entire body of Christ. It's a wonderful thought to realize that on the Lord's day, there is really just one bread being partaken of by the entire body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 17. Take time to think of all the wonderful people you are in communion with in the body of Christ. Some of them have passed on. Some are sitting near you today and are a great blessing to you. Some of them are across continents thanking God for your fellowship with them in the gospel. Some of them you have not met and likely will not meet until the resurrection. Thank Jesus for his sacrifice, which brought you into communion with the people of God. So these are just a few thoughts that could fill our minds right now during the Lord's Supper. Would you pray with me? God, our Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you that you did institute this memorial feast at, for a time that each first day of the week we can pause and remember you. Remember our covenant with you, our agreement with you, and remember all that you've done for us. Father, thank you so much for your love, for your care, for your blessings, for your mercy and your grace. And thank you so much for the precious sacrifice that Jesus made to give us life, for he indeed is the bread of life. Father, we pray your blessing upon this bread at this time. Help each one of us to Remember the significance of the, the body that he gave for us and that the body that he left for us here on this earth to be of service to you. We thank you and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, at this time we pause to remember the blood that was shed for us, the precious innocent blood of your Son that he shed to give us life, a blood that is so powerful that it can wash away our sins, make us acceptable once again to you. Lord, we pray your blessing now upon the cup that we partake of and help each one of us to partake in a worthy manner this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In just a second, we're going to say a prayer for the contribution, but I just wanted to mention uh, that if you're not aware, there is a, a basket on the table between the two auditoriums for your contributions, or 
those monetary contributions can be uh, mailed to the church building address either way. In addition to giving of our financial means, the Lord has blessed each one of us with talents and abilities that we need to be using in his service. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you so much for the opportunity that we've had to gather and worship to you this morning. And Lord, we just can't thank you enough for all the many, many, many blessings that you've showered upon us. We're so grateful for the, the Mountain View congregation, this fellowship of believers that, that we can serve with. We thank you for the talents and abilities that you've given to each one of us. And we just pray that you would give us the, the energy and the ambition to use all that we have in service to you. Father, you've just blessed us with material things and we just pray that these contributions can be used to effectively spread the good news in this world. These things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's be standing for our closing song and then Roger Stefanik will dismiss us with a word of prayer. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful day. We thank you for the moisture that you've given us. We thank you for this congregation. But most of all, we're thankful you for your son and the obedience that he had and the love that he had for you and the love that he had for us. We thank you for all that you do. We ask that you help us to glorify your name as we go out into the world. Help us to be your light that shines onto this world. We ask also that you be with this congregation and the elders. Help to bless this congregation and help us to do your will. In this we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
people there with the coffee cups? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, go back to the back side. What did you do to get that? I didn't. They did it? Yeah, they did it. Aim it back at the door. Oh. 